welcome. I mean, of course, the happy evil was ready for his third adventure. Dungeon Basics. The newcomer evil should learn the basics of dungeon management. The still learning the ropes evil had decided to try the excellent tutorials. Good choice. In this childishly simple introductory mission, it would learn the basics of dungeon management. Things like digging, building rooms, and hiring and firing creatures. Everything a novice evil needs to know. First of all, it admired the center of its power, the dungeon heart. This, if possible, should never be broken, as that would lead to an inglorious and permanent end to the definitely wanting to avoid this at all costs evil. Naturally, the most important resource for any evil genius was gold. One can make the best things out of the glittering metal, and nary a creature was going to let the absolute evil hire it and push it around without a coin or two. Sad, I know, but that's the way the cold, hard, capitalist world of evil works. Although a little gold could also be stored in the dungeon heart, the little snots, the strange name giving evil's workers, had to travel long distances to do so. It made much more sense to build a treasury nearby the fast-learning evil immediately began doing so. Sometimes the bored evil's little snots didn't work quickly enough. That was the time to give them a hearty slap with the hand of terror. Naturally, this had to be done immediately. through a caged glance at its population limits. These were divided into little snots and creatures. As opposed to creatures, little snots did not have to be hired separately, but were always regenerated up to the maximum limit. And so it was that the massacring evil didn't have to worry if one of these miserable creatures died. It simply had to wait for the next one. At the same time, the little snots were the dungeon workers who dug the galleries, mined the gold, and took care of any number of other things. That's why it was never a bad idea to increase their maximum limit. The thirsty for more little snots evil hurriedly began work. The corresponding research was kindly unlocked for the absolute evil. This was necessary in the tutorial in order not to confuse it with the wide range of possibilities. Besides, there are people out there who really do everything wrong. Unfortunately, creatures were a little more demanding than the miserable little snots. A hideout would have to be researched before creatures such as goblins and orcs could be hired. As loyal as the little snots were, they were unable to fight and took to their heels in panicked flight at the first sight of an enemy. Sighing, the unscrupulous evil set about providing a hideout.
army craving evil had hired a creature which would from now on do its dirty work. However, each creature consumed a population point. Fortunately, these could be increased just like the number of workers. Should it become necessary to recover a population point, the maliciously grinning evil could always use the egress located at its dungeon heart. Simply toss the creature onto it, a little pull of the lever, and, oh, whoops. Well, there it goes. These creatures were pretty spoiled. Not only did horde creatures demand their own bunks, they also wanted something to eat. Otherwise, they would soon refuse to do any work whatsoever and go on strike. The deeply sighing evil had no other choice than to build his creatures a gobbler farm to satisfy their hunger. work. The gobbler farm was now ready. Later, the creatures would also demand other things, but for now, they were satisfied. The fast learning evil had mastered the first tutorial with flying colors. Excellent work. Evil evilness. The fast learning evil quickly set about sending its creatures into the overworld. The fast learning evil had begun the second tutorial. It now more or less knew what it had to do to build a dungeon. Now it would turn to the overworld, where it would sow chaos and destruction. Up there waited a Isle of Good, which just begged to be destroyed. The impatient evil got right down to destroying. Before the overworld could be destroyed, a number of creatures would first have to be brought there. The Hand of Terror greedily reached out to grab some. First, creatures ventured out into the overworld. The destruction-craving evil could hardly wait to transform all those unbearably rich colors into 50 shades of gray. The drooling evil did not have the omnipotence in the overworld it was used to in the dungeon. Here, it had to direct its creatures the old-fashioned way with orders. Isle of Good had been destroyed. 
to the ground. <laughs> this not only made for a more pleasant ambiance, but also produced some lovely evilness, which could be used for research. The researching evil quickly set about spending its evilness. The watchful evil had researched the guardroom. There, its creatures could stand watch and be warned of any attackers at any early stage. The fantastic evil had understood the basics of the overworld and the advantages of evilness in the blink of an eye. Not that those were difficult concepts, but hey, you take what you can get, so good work. Dungeons for advanced students. The skilled evil quickly learned the skills needed to run a dungeon very efficiently. The knowledge thirsty evil obviously couldn't get enough of these crazy tutorials. All right then, let's improve our knowledge of the dungeon. The absolute evil's creatures gathered experience from battles over the course of time, and thus reached new levels. This was to be welcomed, as higher level creatures were much more powerful. Unfortunately, the creatures also became harder to please as their levels increased, and had the impudence to demand new things. Unbelievable! But that borders on treason. Horde creatures, for example, would later demand beer that they themselves produced in the brewery. But the brewery was still a long way off, as the annoyed evil's little snots had once again proved their lack of intelligence and hadn't built any workplaces in the dungeon. Toolboxes would later be needed for the brewery. These were produced by little snots at workplaces in the workshop. Sighing, the once again disappointed by its workers' evil, set about building the workplace. The little snots willingly set to work producing toolboxes with a stupid grin on their faces. These were needed to build the workplace in the brewery. A cast iron brewing kettle made out of toolboxes? <laughs> Computer game logic. The not particularly known for its patience evil patiently waited for enough toolboxes to be available. The splendid evil had finally produced enough toolboxes by waiting in boredom. It quickly set about building the brewing kettle. Oh, my God. 
kettle stood proudly, and the diligent little snots went directly to work producing the delicious brew so that the horde creatures could soon start knocking it back. All that was missing was someone playing some good old-fashioned folk music. Then again, maybe not. Always makes my ears bleed. But now for something completely different, as the hard-working evil now had access to the lecture hall. There, additions to normal research in the form of scrolls could be made for small amounts of gold, time, and evilness. The always slathering for something new evil quickly began to try them out. <laughs> choice. Interesting. I would have researched that too. did work. The good humored evil had not only satisfied its alcoholic creatures, but at the same time learned more about research. It now considered itself well equipped to begin converting the lessons learned into evil nasty deeds. The final exam. The chock full of knowledge evil now faced the challenge of preparing its dungeon for real dangers. And now it's time for a good book. I still have this comic, and if I were to make myself a drink, I could... Oh, wait. You're here? What? Has already done all the tutorials? What do you mean the menu offers a fourth tutorial? But I don't have any more documents for that. I'd love to work with professionals just once. Those boneheads at Realmforge can't even get the main menu right. They're probably busy building the Berlin airport. Well, since you're already here, we can... Oh, crap. Third person. Well, since the already arrived evil was already there, you can probably forget that drink. But keeping the narrator from his hard-earned drink and his lovely Marvel comic book evil commenced yet another tutorial. In this one, it would, um... um well, um, um... Learn something about, uh... Traps and spells. Like, um, how to make and uh, use them. It was a pretty, um, free-form tutorial, as if someone had just made it up really quickly. It was about defending the dungeon against attacking heroes. A few traps had already been placed. These were ready to make life difficult for every hero that approached them. Some others were manually triggered by a blow from the Hand of Terror. Here, timing was everything. The Arcanium already held a lot of mana, ready to be used for powerful spells.
A suspicious trampling of heavy boots and clanging of armor was heard in the dungeon. Soon, the first heroes would enter the dungeon. There are enemies in your dungeon. Enemies have entered the dungeon. Defend the dungeon heart. Enemies have entered the dungeon. It's payday. There are enemies in your dungeon.
Enemies have entered the dungeon. Excellent work. The last hero had been fended off. The tutorial was finished. Finally, I can get back to my gin and tonic. I mean, super. Well done. So, now it's time you turn to other things. Things that don't stop me from drinking and from reading my comic. The Shadow of Absolute Evil. The Shadow of Absolute Evil had crossed the sea and now sought the chosen target, a dark elf named Talia. A long, long time ago. The absolute evil had, in the famous predecessor to this game, subjugated the known world and defeated good. Now, in a world full of blackness and despair, it spent its days sipping cocktails from the skulls of its enemies and forging new plans over a grilled unicorn kebab. Unfortunately, there wasn't much left to forge. A few orc wedges? The occasional trick played on the little snots. There just wasn't anything left to conquer. As the weeks and months passed, the absolute evil grew ever more reticent and seclusive. From time to time, one could hear a slight murmur from the depressed evil's super-secret, secret laboratory in the depths of the dungeon. Its creatures grew more worried with each passing day and even started to miss its ingenious evil tricks. It was a somewhat confusing time for them. No beatings, no torture, and no being sent to a senseless death. On the other hand, it was a rather nice change. Eons passed, and the unicorn supply dwindled until suddenly, one wonderful day, the evil genius evil joyfully burst from its super secret secret laboratory. It finally had a new goal. An unknown continent, as often found in sequels, lay to the east, sheltered from the wicked evil by naught but a puny little ocean. It immediately had a fleet built. This was so powerful that it covered the horizon from north to south and was manned by the best and most powerful creatures at the devious evil's command. The fleet set sail for the crossing to this new continent, left the harbor, and sank. Yet that mattered naught to the couldn't give a hoot about its minions evil. It instructed its goblins and little snots to design an even more powerful fleet. These new ships were gigantic. Loaded with devious evil's second best creatures, the fleet set out. And that sank as well. The annoyed evil saved his relentless anger towards the shipbuilders for later. Obviously, it would have to take care of the matter itself. With a sigh, it cast a spell and created a shadow of itself. A creature of absolute darkness and evilness. This shadow flew across the water towards the east. 
There, it would find a vessel, a corruptible being that would subjugate this land in the name of evil. And the Shadow had the perfect target in mind. The great paladin Thanos, hero of the totally eastern kingdoms and a repugnantly good fellow. He was visiting the fatiguing library in Tristram with his comrades to see his foster daughter Talia. Well now, Talia, tell me about your studies. Are you making progress with the writings of the ancient sages? Yes, dear father. I have thoroughly digested it and have come a step closer to the good. The desire within me to do evil is defeated. Really? <laughs> Excellent. I am proud of you, my child. Continue to concentrate on your studies. I must go to Stormbreeze to clear up a few matters. I'll be back soon. In the meantime, my loyal friend Grimly will protect the country. Should anything trouble you, you can turn to him. Isn't that right, Grimly? I, of course, Janos. I'll keep an eye on the damned elf. Y I mean, your daughter. You can count on me. Then I'll see you soon, my friends. May the goddess watch over you, and the light burn eternally. Bon voyage, dear father. I'll make you so proud of me. Who does good is good. Yuck. Disgusting phrases like that always leave such a nasty taste in my mouth. These abnormally good heroes, on the other hand, had no inkling of the malignity gathered to the south. One moment a herd of sheep was peacefully grazing, and the next moment, whomph! With a fulminant explosive effect that ate up half our special effects budget, the shadow entered the world. His target, a dark elf caught between good and evil, was very close. As the shadow of the unspeakably evil evil moved through the world, all around it died. Plants withered, animals perished. Sort of like a picnic with my family. The shadow of the far-off evil found itself very, very close to Twistrum. It could practically feel its target's presence. Take these lanterns, men, and let the light of the goddess shine. For the night is dark and full of terrors, and there's a pile of horse poo around here somewhere. I trod in it earlier. For the darkness! Uh, 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 I, mean, I mean, for the, for the light! Sorry. <laughs> I'm still in training. <laughs> uh... Yes, well, that is somewhat suboptimal. Naturally, the shadow of the almighty evil was an incredibly powerful creature. But, well, light was a bit of an issue. It would certainly be wise to stay out of the lantern light. The shadow reached the entrance to Twistrum. Fortunately, this one was not closed, but it was brightly lit. Luckily, there was an unfortunate guard on patrol that the Shadow was able to possess, thanks to its incredible powers, as long as it wasn't in the light. The Shadow of Absolute Evil melded with the guard and took control of his body. Thus, it was able to pass through the gate with ease. Uh, what was that? I think there was something wrong with that last beer. Unfortunately, the Shadow's possession only lasted a short while before the guard was able to free himself. Still, it was long enough to get past the gate. The Shadow's target was close. So close. Talia, the Dark Elf. Soon she would fight on the side of evil. <laughs> May the goddess be with you, my friends. It will soon be time to open the orphanage in the fatiguing library. Come to the big square and join in the festivities. Well, I don't know. I had actually kind of planned to spend the evening in the bathhouse. 
Trans. This orphanage is very important to my father. Thanos, you know, the mighty paladin, the one you really don't want to offend. Uh, yeah, all right, all right, we'd love to come. Excellent! May the light of the goddess shine upon you and let us experience this exhilarating spectacle in the big square together. Follow me, my friends, for evil at the, 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 the light, I mean. <laughs> Keep the light burning bright, for the night is dark and full of terriers or uh, errors or uh, something like that. Stop holding the lantern in my face like that, boy. I am Grimly. Enough chit-chat, men. In the distance, one could hear the unbearably good bells of a church. They must be marking the opening of the orphanage in the fatiguing library. Heroes, with lanterns, began to stream in that direction. The crossing on a red signal evil shadow swore, or would have if it had a mouth, and tried to avoid the lanterns as much as possible. to see so many of you here of your own free will. Finally, finally, the time had come and the shadow of the passes in the slow lane evil was within range of Talia, the dark elf. The time had come for it to use its incredible powers to possess her for a short time. My dear father would be very proud were he with us today. He would be overjoyed to see us give the young and the needy a place to live and thrive. That's why I'm happy to take this orphanage and this orphanage and destroy it utterly and all of you with it. What did she say? Die! Ah, I, I feel the power within me. Oh, it, it, it's over 9,000! Unimagined power surfaced in Talia. The black magic of the Dark Elves. She immediately began to unleash these powers of chaos upon the world. Like lambs to the slaughter! The Dark Elf raged through Twistrum's inexperienced guards. She thereby built up a tremendous inner energy, which she released into the world as a focus beam, while screaming, Kamehameha! Meanwhile, in the fatiguing library, they waited eagerly with coffee and cake for Talia to show up and open the new orphanage. The energy beam hit the cake with a resounding zap and reduced it to ashes. Oh yes, and the rest of the building and everyone inside it as well. The narcissistic evil patted itself on the shoulder for this. 
Or it would have, but the metal armor always made such a terrible clonking noise when it tried. But then again, that's what little snots are for. Obviously, the Dispatch Shadow had found a perfect vessel in the Dark Elf. Talia had already earned the title of Employee of the Month, with the utter destruction of the fatiguing library, as well as half of Twistrum. The destruction of an orphanage and the bombardment of innocent citizens with magic missiles immediately made her the Minion Wasting Evil's new favorite henchperson. Her evil deeds complete, Talia withdrew into the vaults beneath the ruins of the fatiguing library. There, between the slaughterhouse and mad Archbishop Lazarus's apartments, she prepared to create something powerful in the name of the absolutely, ultimately evil, evil. A dungeon heart, the cornerstone of any dungeon's power. Far away, Paladin of Light and Talia's former mentor, Thanos, was on his way to the Empire's capital of Stormbreeze. Naive and trusting as he was, he was whistling cheerfully to himself with no inkling of his foster daughter's dark deeds. Though he was aware that as a dark elf, she always had a core of evil in her. He had hoped to defeat it through religious indoctrination with ancient mad writings. Well, old bean. You thought wrong. <laughs> Twistrum in ruins. Talia, the Dark Elf, had turned to evil and laid the fatiguing library in ruins. Now she began to build a small power base in its vaults, her first dungeon. Twistrum looked like the leftovers from a heavy metal concert. What? What have I done? Oh no! I've fallen to evil again! Father will be beside himself! He was right when he said, You either die a hero, or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain! Although, in a way, it was fun to be evil. Burning things, pillaging, and showing those nasty goody two shoes where the hammer hangs. <laughs> they just look down at me anyway. My revenge will be terrible. While Tanya was delivering a typical villainous monologue, something happened around her. From the depths arose a pulsating crystal filled with the magic savvy evil's power. A dungeon heart. Not to be confused with those dungeon hearts from other games. We don't want to be sued again. Hello, greetings. <laughs> what seems to be your boggle? Secret mental messages were exchanged between Talia and the mentally savvy evil's crystal. We could explain this in detail at this point, but that would require a three-hour monologue on my part, and I am definitely not being paid enough for that. <sighs> right then. I will make these people suffer for mocking me. Father's henchmen never liked me anyway, and always insulted me, calling me pointy-eared. It's time for my well-deserved revenge! The game logic internalizing evil had given Talia an assignment. Out there on the surface were shamelessly good places in urgent need of destruction. Nah, no problem. I'll take care of it. I am an evil army. Naturally, the strategically well-versed evil did not send its new general into battle alone. A dungeon had to be built, and creatures hired to provide her with a powerful army. Of course, the sophisticatedly thinking evil already knew which way the wind blew in a dungeon. However, should it be hit by short-term memory loss, it could effortlessly look up things in the fabulous almanac.
the new improved research menu TM opened and gave an overview of currently available technologies. At the moment, the selection was still limited, but that would change. After all, this evil crusade had only just begun. day. Thanos's head. Blinding beams of light met the dauntless evil's creatures. They briefly squinted at the disgusting brightness. Finally, they grinned, satisfied. At last, they were able to carry the battle to the good people and were not limited to protecting themselves in a dungeon as is the case with other representatives of the genre. <clears throat> yeah, what is going on here? I feel disturbed in the fall. The deeds of the conspicuous evil and its henchmen had not gone unnoticed. As a matter of fact, even a blind man could see the destruction they left behind. As idiotic heroes do, they sent out a small patrol to scout the air. Move out, men! Have a look around and report back to me. While I would love to accompany you myself, I'm currently, um, teaching myself to play the ukulele.
burned down. And I was going to come here tonight for Pilates. Hasta la vista, baby. There are enemies in your dungeon. Hey, where does this lead? We should take a closer look. The first heroes had discovered the not-so-well-hidden evil's dungeon and now entered its depths. Of course, the insidious evil had already prepared a despicable reception for them. At least I hope so. Even if that's not the case, I will kill these ridiculous do-gooders myself. They will pay for mocking me over the years. Wait! Wait a minute, what am I saying? These are my friends. How can I plan their deaths? Talia had chosen an extremely unfavorable time for moral doubts. Luckily, her evil dark elf heritage prevailed. Hey, Talia, you're evil, so act like it. Huh? The armies of evil here? Damn it all, how did that happen? Time to call out the heavy guns. Right, men, get ready to attack in waves. Uh, excuse me, sir. Wouldn't it make more sense if we attacked all at once? Where's the fun in that? Wave after wave, that's a strategy for real men. Thanks to the enemy's limited tactical finesse, their destruction was virtually unavoidable. So it was time to decorate for the victory celebration, to get the beer and hire the orc dancers. Okay, maybe not orcs. I shudder at the thought. <laughs> They're gonna be child's play. Leave them to me. I mean, hold them back and let them hit you while I deal with them. There are enemies in your dungeon. must die.
in his vegan cuisine? Oh well, no real loss there. <laughs> the armies of evil reach one of those disgustingly good places that had survived the destruction of Twistrum. The ice-cold hand, I mean evil, would deal with it immediately. Enemies have entered the dungeon. Thank <laughs> you. 